For many years, I've had a request to clean a mountain lion's skull. Well, they are protected here in California, and we can't even get them shipped into the state. I happen to be in Oregon with family over the holiday, and my nephew, Berkeley, just harvested this cat. So this is how you clean a mountain lion's skull. Today, I'm using the Bridger Boiler. It is the ultimate travel boiling setup. Everything you see sitting there comes in one kit. The tank, the lid, the burner, the pot, all of it. All one kit and it all fits inside of itself. In short, we got that Bridger Boiler full of water, added a little dish soap to degrease. We dropped that skull down into the bottom and we brought it to a full rolling boil. That line was down in there for about 10 minutes and then I pulled it out and I like to leave the bottom jaw and the top of the head connected, leave everything all as one piece. And then I wanna clamp it between my feet and wash in between all those teeth, those canines, all the little teeth in the front. I always like to do this first because those small teeth, especially on like a bobcat, are notorious for getting shot at with a power washer and then we've got to find a tooth. If you do this first, you can get them clean without having any worry of losing them. Now, if this is your first time here, what I do here is I boil skulls and clean them for clients, hunters, collectors, whatever. My method is to boil the skull to loosen the meat and tissue and then I use a power washer to wash off all the meat. And then I reboil in what I call the white bone creations mix, which is a mixture of high volume peroxide and water. And it varies per animal, but that's what I do. Now with this cat's muzzle clean around the teeth area on top, I'm gonna separate the jaw from the top of the head. That way I can wash in two pieces. The bottom of the jaw always goes faster than the top of the head. So it's this perfect timing for me to pull out the jaw, work on it, leave the head to boil longer. You get the deal. So back in the pot for about 15 minutes, I pull the jaw out and I want to spray into every hole in every orifice. Anywhere there is meat or tissue, I want to make it go away being very careful not to blow out those little teeth in the front. If you boil for a very little amount of time, you'll wash longer, but you'll have less opportunity of losing teeth. If you boil for a really long time, you can almost guarantee that you're gonna take it too far and lose teeth. Now let's get to washing. I wanna show you a really good example of that every hole, every orifice bit. In the side of the jaw, on just about any animal under the sun, there's little holes up by the canine. And on the inside of the jaw, there's like a big hole with a nerve ending in it. You need to be spraying water into either one of those holes and they need to be coming out the opposite hole. Let me give you an example. It's pretty difficult to see with all the spraying going on, but just opposite of where I'm spraying, if you can see water shooting out, that means I've got water going in one side of that jaw and water going out the other side of the jaw, taking everything in its path with it. You get a lot of like nerve endings and tissue in there. If your jaws are greasing up, it's because this area of the jaw did not get clean. It is very difficult to do, but just spray until you're getting water in one side and out the other. That being said, the jaw is clean. I'm gonna set it aside, keep it hydrated, and then I'm gonna start on the top of the noggin. Every hole, every orifice, y'all. Let's get to washing.
Now, believe me, in the skull cleaning community, and yes, there is a community, removing nasal cavity has negative connotation. I like it out, very much so like it out. So I'm taking a pair of forceps and I'm pulling out all of that nasal cavity so I can make that core, that whole sinus, really, really clean. Another very popular question is, how did you get the brain out if you didn't remove the ear butts? On this one, right behind the eye socket, there's a little hole that goes to the brain. I'm gonna slow it down so you can see it. You spray your power washer in there and it will remove the entire brain without it being in your mouth or face. And just like that, the skull is 90% clean. So I've changed my water, got rid of that original batch of water. I put two gallons of clear water in there, and then I'm gonna add a half gallon of this GLB shock oxidizer. Now this used to be called Aquasilk shock oxidizer. I buy it online from Pool Geek. They ship it to my doorstep. I put a half gallon to two gallons of water. I bring that skull and all that stuff to a boil. I pull it out rinse off all the excess debris, it whitens, degreases, and just makes the whole thing gorgeous. One more really great example of spraying in one hole and having water come out the other hole. You can see it clear as day now that the peroxide has done its work. You can even see here where I'm holding like a big nerve ending that shot out of there after I thought I already had it clean that's amazing what the peroxide will do. Anything you miss or anything you're fighting initially, the peroxide will kill in the boil. It'll make it just come off clean as anything. Rinse it, wash it, rinse it, wash it, look up close, put forceps in there, pull out anything you missed, really give it a once over right here. It makes all the difference in the world in the finished product. Then set it out to dry. I like to keep it in front of a fan, not outside, but if you can do that in front of a window where it'll pick up some sunlight, that will make it beautiful. In short, here's what it looked like 24 hours later, and because it was Thanksgiving Day, there's not a whole bunch of show and tell here, so I'll just leave you with a big old giant Thanksgiving fart. I appreciate you. <laughs>